Hello, today we are going to be reacting to Dream SMP, the complete story, Lemanberg Revolution. This is the part two of the Dream SMP complete story. I have reacted to part one. Um, it was a long time ago though. Um, and I was just, I was reading through the comments and I see there's quite a few people that wanted me to continue it and, and look at the, you know, go to part two. People have been saying this is where things start getting interesting and things like that. So I thought, why not? Let's, in the spirit of bringing back and continuing a lot of the series that I kind of just dropped a while ago, um, I'm interested in continuing this one as well. Now, I have just watched, I've rewatched part one again, just to get the context back. So I know um, that it's largely about Tommy joining the server and being an absolute menace and the whole kind of war that broke out to get his um, music disc back. So that's where I'm up to. I've, I've rewatched part one again, so I'm, I'm, I'm clued in. And yeah, I forgot how well made these videos are. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Let's jump into part two. It's quite a long video. We're looking at 36 minutes 30. So I'm not, I'm, as much as possible, I'm not going to be pausing during the video because I don't want to extend this too much for people. Um, so I will probably talk over parts. And if I miss anything, because I'm talking over it or putting put a comment out there, let me know, fill me in, in the comments. Um, but yeah, let's, let's just jump into it. So um, volume is up. Let's go, I'm excited. Or death. Following the events- Sorry, let's actually go back to the start because it was black, so I wanted to push forward a little bit. Here we go. Independence or death. Ooh. Following the events of the first war in the Dream SMP, the tension between Dream and Tommy and Tubbo did not go away. Understandable, Having to be fair. Having been the only people to stand up to Dream, Tommy and Tubbo were not exactly friends with the most powerful man on the server. But they couldn't fight back. They didn't have the resources, the people, or the will to start another battle. Until a new player joined, who would change everything. Will the soot, I believe. Today, I will tell a story. A story of independence. A story of a people who rose up That's against a cool tyranny. Castle. A story of revolution. This and those are cool skins is part as well. two of the story of the Dream SMP. Can we appreciate the fact that he's recreated really quick, all this? This video took weeks to make, so if you could take one second to subscribe, it is completely I'm free and it would make my day. Thank you. Also, thanks again to Lord Cantor for letting me use his recreation of the Dream SMP for this video. Make sure to go check out his channel if you're interested in seeing how he did it. It's wild that he's like re he's basically using a recreation of the server, all these kind of like clips that you're seeing, I assume. Uh, him and his like friends recreating it so it's to sort of tell the story in a much more like neat way and it's great I'm really impressed with this again the link is in the description anyway let's start from the beginning Wilbur Soot a songwriter comedic genius and visionary coming up with some of the most influential ideas in recent Minecraft history Wilbur is a mastermind of virality. Creating his first video on March 29th, 2019, and using his experience from his time with the channel Soot House, Wilbur, in just under two years, has amassed over 3 million subscribers. Bye. So when it was announced that he would be joining the Dream SMP, people knew things would change. But no one expected how much it really would. Being a genius of words and stories, Wilbur brought something to the table that no one had really considered. Tommy had had a rough idea of how the disc saga would go, but for the next story, Wilbur would take it a step further. The introduction of Wilbur marked a turning point in the SMP, from a jumbled mess of conflict to something more. From this point on, the story of the SMP would be planned out, for the most part, before it happened. Interesting. Scripted improvisation. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And Wilbur, the main writer, began his story the day he logged on. This marked the true beginning of the storyline of the Dream SMP. Oh my god, there's so many there as well. Wilbur saw an opportunity in the Dream SMP. Not an opportunity for power or an opportunity for war, but an opportunity for business. 
and on July 24th, he logged on to the SMP and began moving forward. He started by building a caravan. Ca cam camera ca camar 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 Van, Camar Van. the yeah. base of operations <laughs> for his business. <laughs> After this, he went to recruit his first business partner, Tommy Innit. He then explained his master plan for their business. After tricking the rest of the SMP members into giving up all of their blaze rods and brewing stands, Tommy and Wilbur would be able to produce all of the potions on the server, profiting from the newfound rarity of these potions. Agreeing without hesitation, Tommy joined Wilbur and together, they began sweeping the server, convincing players to give up their brewing stands and blaze rods. They started with Tubbo. Tubbo, who trusted Tommy and Wilbur, fell victim to the scam, giving his brewing stands and water breathing potions. <laughs> that being said, not everyone was convinced. One man saw Wait, but how did they how did he manage to like scam them into giving even the potions they've already crafted? Like what what are they saying that they're gonna do with it? Right through their plan. Sapnap. As Tubbo attempted to give up a stack of blaze rods to the Ooh. new business partners, Sapnap punched Tommy out of the way, taking them for himself. With further suspicion of their operation, Sapnap followed Tommy and Wilbur back to their van taking it upon himself to investigate. Entering the truck, Sapnap, against the will of Wilbur and Tommy, began looking around. <laughs> and it only took him a few seconds to enter the back of the truck and find their brewing stands, thus exposing their plans of scamming the server into giving up all of their potion-making supplies. With their backs against the wall, the duo attempted to enlist the help of Fundy, their plan to get Fundy on their side was to frame Sapnap as the bad guy. They then proceeded to hide the evidence of their plans from Fundy, who then decided to join them. After this, Sapnap had had enough. Attempting to arrest Wilbur and Tommy, Sapnap ended up killing Tommy purely for taunting him. This prompted Tubbo, who was on the side of Sapnap after being scammed by Tommy and Wilbur, to reconsider his position. But although his loyalty to Sapnap wavered, for now, he remained on the side of the law. There was nothing the three could do. Being completely outgeared, Wilbur, Tommy, and Fundy retreated to the van. And right as they thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. As it turns out, Tommy had some unfinished business with Punk, having stolen from him once again. Oh dear. And as the team retreated to the van, Purpled and Ponk came to confront Tommy. That van's gonna get blown up, isn't Things it? It's, it has to at this point. good for the new business, and if the team wanted a chance to escape, they had to think of something fast. And quickly, a plan began to form. Wilbur walked out of the van, stalling Purpled and Ponk just long enough for Tommy to escape through the floor of the van into a cave. Shortly after, the two noticed and began to Ooh, pursue like this music. Wilbur, confronted only by Tubbo, logged out of the game to buy some more time. Lastly, Fundy stayed in the caravan, along with Tubbo and Eret, another member of the SMP who had recently joined. The guards stood, awaiting Wilbur to rejoin. Meanwhile, the pursuit of Tommy continued, and before long, they had found him. Oh no. Surrounded, Tommy surrendered. Literally being surrounded. Escorted there. to jail on half a heart. With the news of Tommy being captured, one of the guards, Tubbo, began escorting Fundy to jail as well for conspiring to help Wilbur and Tommy. All that remained in the van was Eric, the final guard standing between Wilbur and Freedom. But in a surprising turn of events, Eret betrayed the other guards, choosing to help the enemy instead. Interesting. And just like that, Eret was an ally of the business. Knowing he was safe, Wilbur logged back in and conspired with Eret to free Fundy and Tommy. A Their plan agent. to free Fundy was easy as he was still being escorted by Tubbo. Eret would convince Tubbo to let him finish the escorting of Fundy to court, where he would then bring Fundy to his house, allowing him to plant Wilbur the ingredients for an invisibility potion. 
and the plan would have worked. But when Fundy and Eret reached Fundy's house, Purpled was there. Little did they know he had been spying on them in their voice call the whole time and knew Eret had betrayed them. He then quickly informed Sapnap of the news and requested him to come to Fundy's base as backup. While Sapnap was leaving for Fundy's base, he left Punk in charge of watching Tommy. As the two sat in the courthouse, they began to talk. And before long, Tommy had convinced Punk to help him escape. Tommy's plan was to have Punk draw the guards back to the courthouse and escape through a hole he dug in the back of his cell. In the toilet, this basically. This was perfect timing for Sapnap and Purpled, as Sapnap had just arrived at Fundy's base and the two guards began escorting Fundy and Eret to court. Tubbo, meanwhile, traveled back to the van to keep an eye on Wilbur. After Wilbur transformed the van from the potion brewing station it was to a hot dog van, Tubbo, <laughs> with Wilbur's permission, investigated. Finding nothing out of the ordinary, Tubbo provided compensation of 10 gold for the disturbances they had caused earlier. And gold was one of the main materials he needed to make the invisibility potion. Uh, okay, the that plan makes sense. was beginning to fall into place. Although it had hit some rough patches, there was still a solid chance of the prisoners escaping. Oh, and okay. as the guards escorted Fundy and Eret back to court, Wilbur continued gathering the resources for the potions. Before long, the trial had started and they were running out of time to escape. Ponk had been figured out and was thrown in jail with Tommy, and Purple went off looking for Wilbur who had just began brewing. With Purple gone, and Wilbur about to be compromised, all four of the prisoners dug out of their cells and ran. Everyone was on the run. <laughs> After some fighting, everyone decided it would be best to meet back at the van. And as they were coming back, Tubbo and Wilbur began to talk. After explaining his plans to Tubbo and talking of the injustice they had done to him and his accomplices, Tubbo decided to join his side. And just like that, with everyone safe in the van and a new member on their side, the businessmen had been through enough. They How many knew people are on the server, the next actually? Time they logged on, but at this they point, they had to fight back. And Wilbur had an idea. One that would send the server into further chaos and begin one of the most famous stories on the SMP. The team would no longer be businessmen, they would be citizens of a new nation they would begin a revolution. Somewhat fitting with the Hamilton series that I'm doing at the moment as well. Before we continue, I'd like to give a quick thanks to this video's sponsor, The Archon. If you don't already know, The Archon is one of the most popular factions in Skyblock servers, and they also host a variety of other fun games as well. Luckily for you, just for watching the video, you can grab yourself a free rank. Just click on the free rank icon in the store, then add to cart, Specify the realm you want to claim your rank in, and finally enter code EVAN to claim the rank. I wonder if that still works considering it's two years ago. The IP to join and code to claim your rank are on screen now and also in the description. So don't miss out and come join the fun. And now, back to the video. One week passed before their country was officially born. In that week, as well as the time before Wilbur joined, a lot had changed on the server. New players, and new builds. During the time of peace after the first war, two new players joined the server. These players were Skeppy and Eret. For the most part, Skeppy did not play a major role in the story other than burning a new disc Tommy had gathered after the first war. Oof. Eret, on the other hand, did and would play a major role in the new nation of Lamanberg. I vaguely know who Skeppy At is, I don't know who Eret is though. The new builds included a sewer system that led to many areas of the server, Eret's castle, which eventually cool castle. housed the throne for whoever held the title of King of the Dream SMP, a jungle base built far away by Tubbo, and a few new towers here and there. I have Sauron, love it. Bit by bit, development continued on the server until the day Lamanberg was born. Lamanberg. This day marked the beginning of a new era in the Dream SMP. An era 
of independence. Three days. That's how long the war would last. In three days, the fate of their nation would be decided, and the wills of the men, and Tommy, who created it, <laughs> would be tested beyond their limits. But before they could begin a revolution, their great nation needed a name. And Tommy had just the idea. Wilbur, I've, I've had the idea, I've had the idea. Oh, I have a lot oh of my go. god. Manberg, or alternatively, Man Mantopia. I like oh, no. Mantopia. Yeah. How do we? But how do we make it European? Le Manberg. <laughs> Le Manberg. Le yeah, Manberg. that's funny. Le Manberg. Where do you live? I live in the state of Le Manberg. After the name was decided, the fellow citizens began to build a wall to distinguish their land from the Greater Dream SMP. In their new nation, anyone would be allowed to make potions without being arrested, and the tyranny of Dream and his fellow Americans would no longer affect them. This was the dream. And along with Wilbur, Tommy, and Tubbo, Fundy and Eret joined the new nation. Upon hearing the news of revolution brewing on the server, Dream went to confront the members of Lamanberg. This time, they didn't hide anything. The team explained that everything inside the walls was their land and would be governed and cared for by them. Interesting. Okay. And under no rule of the greater dream. The hot dog van inside as well. Included would be Tommy's Hill House, which would remain property of their nation as the Lamanberg Embassy. I was going to say it's basically an embassy at that point. Dream, then. however, was not convinced and left to conspire with his friends about what to do. Before long, Dream began bribing Tommy to leave Lamanberg and rejoin the Greater Dream SMP. But he would have to do better than that if he wanted someone to turn. That being said, Wilbur still questioned Tommy's devotion to the cause. All you've done for this nation is you've, you've, you're one of the faces. Oh, it's a sausage. Right, right, thank you, thank you. But you need to understand that you've done very little in terms of um, set up. I mean, look behind you. Look at Eret working hard. As the two continued to talk, Wilbur still questioned whether Tommy was truly devoted to the revolution or just there to be a face of the nation. And after they reached an agreement, phase two of Wilbur's plan a hot dog. began I get to it. take hot shape. On fire. Makes sense. I get it. That took me a, that took me a minute. <laughs> but then, Tommy noticed something out of place. Oh, oh no. After alerting the rest of the squad about Did what the hot was dog happening, do that? Tommy saw It's Alyssa walking away from the fire. She had taken it too far. And as the team chased her down, she logged out to escape death. The team camped where she disconnected. Wilbur convinced Tommy to take off his armor and use his words, as he would not let their new nation of Lamanberg become the very thing he sought to destroy. Upon Alyssa rejoining, she began to run and Tommy killed her anyway. <laughs> For Wilbur, this was the final straw. And when they all got back to Lamanberg, he temporarily dismissed Tommy, making him go back to his home in the Greater Dream SMP. And banished him from but the kingdom. then, word got out that Tubbo was being held hostage by Dream, Sapnap, and Puns. Tommy knew if there was any time to regain Wilbur's trust, it was now. By saving Tubbo, he could finally be the hero for Lamanberg he had always wanted to be. But they took him hostage as well. After Tubbo revealed that he had invisibility potions, Dream and Sapnap decided they could not risk them escaping with their stuff and killed both of them. With this, Wilbur knew it was time. Time to make their revolution official. To free themselves of the tyranny and the aggression of the greater Dream SMP, and to officially declare their independence. There's no way he actually <clears> wrote <throat> a declaration of independence. Dance. And after some writing, Wilbur Soot, the leader of the great nation of Lamanberg, had drafted their declaration of independence. Forever the nation of the Dream SMP have cast great sins upon our great land of the Hata Dog Van. They have Hata robbed us, imprisoned us, threatened us, killed many of our men. 
This time of tyranny ends with us. This book declares that the nation which shall be henceforth known as Lamanberg is separate, emancipated, and independent from the nation of Dream SMP. The Union of the Masters of Men. Together we are one. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one to dissolve the bonds which bind us, disregarding of this truth is nothing short of tyranny. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The right of the people exists above the right of the king, the right of the government, and the right of the economy. From the Hatad Dog Van, we shall prevail. Damn, Life, what a speech. Liberty and the pursuit of victory. I get it now. Jeez, I want to join. This document was signed by all members of Lamanberg and represented much more than a mere book. These words were what held the nation together a vow of brotherhood that would only end in independence, independence or death. death. With the framing of the that book, makes sense. The very the beginning of the video as well showed itself as a force to be reckoned with, and to dream. This marked the point of no return. As long as Lamanberg stood, Dream knew he couldn't have control, and so, him, George, Sapnap, and Puns drafted another document: the Declaration of War. Ooh, Unlike the first okay. war for Tommy's discs, this time there was much more at stake. This was not just a war for independence, but a war for power. And Dream would stop at nothing to put Lamanberg in the ground if it was the last thing he'd do. TNT cannons, maybe? With the reality of war beginning to set in, both sides began to prepare. Offstream, Tubbo had gathered potions to aid them in the coming battles. Meanwhile, Dream had burned down Tubbo's house. Because Dream was offline, Tommy and Tubbo used this time to attempt to convince the members of the Dream SMP guard that they were on the wrong side. They began this by tempting puns with a meaningless title hoping he'd get excited and betray his friends. Next, Tommy had an idea Did to tempt them? Dream. He stated that if Dream refrained from attacking them, he would give up one of the discs. Tommy's most prized possessions on the SMP and the result of a hard-fought war would be put on the line for independence. But as Tommy and Tubbo were leaving Dream's base, their entire army logged on Oh at no! Once. Tubbo was gunned down by Dream as Tommy fled to the sewers. All of the potions that Tubbo had gathered were lost upon his death, being burned by Dream. Soon, everyone joined the call and reality began to set in. Pass the TNT kind right there. The Dream SMP army was there, and Lamanberg's was not. All Tommy and Tubbo could do was stall them and hope for the best. As Tommy arrived at his house to speak with Dream and his army, he found the entire property laced with TNT. As a final effort, Tommy attempted to convince Dream he was in the wrong, but he would have none of it. The line had already been crossed, damage had been done, and doom was imminent. Dream and his men gave Tommy and the rest of Lamanberg one day. One day to surrender, or everything they owned would be destroyed. And so, as Wilbur received the news, the true preparation for the final battle began. Tommy and Wilbur and the rest of Le Man Child Berg, we are at war. Do you know what we have that they don't have? We have camaraderie. It's we quite jarring right to hear the actual voices now. We have an area to defend. There is no mercy. We have burnt down Tubbo's house. We have planted TNT cannons around your land. We have cobblestone walled the outside and we have shot one warning shot inside your walls no matter what happens no matter even if he comes even if he destroys the very hot dog van that we live out of until the day we stop breathing that is when Lamanberg has fallen and we have no mercy no mercy for you do you know what he's driven by greed do you know what we're driven by the defense of our land do you understand we will come we will burn down your houses. They can, he can destroy the walls. We will kill everything inside your walls. He can, he can slaughter our friends, our family. And we will.
I assume this here is. Oh no, it's not cobblestone. I thought this was just like cobblestone towers from like lava walls or something. Um, what is that? We'll take back the land that is rightfully ours. But until the day we stop breathing, the that minute the we let go of that dream, I that's think. when he is won. Men, are you going to let go of that dream? I want to see white flags! White flags outside your base by tomorrow at dawn or you are dead! Damn, that's intense. Doomsday. August 4th. The Day of Reckoning. And as Dream and his army looked to the skies of Lamanberg, no flags flew. Today, there would be war. Before Wilbur logged on, Tommy and Tubbo were attacked. After losing a few useless items, they retreated to Lamanberg where they waited for the official start of the war. Then their leader Wilbur joined the server. With Dream and his men camping the cobblestone wall they had built around part of Lamanberg, the revolutionaries retreated to the van and began to create a plan of action. Wilbur emphasized the importance of the element of surprise, as their team was completely outgeared by Dream's army. While they discussed their plan, Dream and his men spread to each wall, surrounding them. Staying true to their peaceful origins, now was not the time to armor up. Using their words, Wilbur and Tommy attempted one final time to resolve things peacefully. Classic diplomatic but, tactic right there. It didn't work. And as the two sides regrouped, they prepared for the Battle of the Ages. The war for independence, and most of all, the war for power. Wilbur decided that it would be a greater benefit for the group if he watched the battle from above. This meant the one leading them into battle would be Tommy. As they began making their way to the battlefield, they took it all in. The final calm before the storm. The last peace. Once the battle began, there would be no rest until someone had won. And having had their moment of peace, both armies moved into position. Let the war begin. The battle began on Tommy's front lawn. Just quickly, imagine being the guy on the server that is like not really involved in this. You're just going along with your, little, like your Minecraft your Minecraft survival game, and there's just this war rage, raging in the background around you. <laughs> just like... Dream and his men wild. held Tommy's power tower while the Lamanberg army stood in the grass. As the enemies stared each other down, they both waited for the first move to be made. Then, a shot was fired by Dream. But it was nowhere close to the opposition. Confused, <gasps> it's a trap. Everyone thought he missed. TNT underneath but them. He didn't. I knew it. This was the first trap of the war and managed to take out Fundy. Immediately, the Lamanberg army retreated inside Tommy's house as arrows began to rain down from above. Totally undergeared, Tommy crafted a bow and missed the only shot he had. <laughs> It had been less than a minute since the first shot was fired, and they were already backed into a corner. As Tommy began to retreat, Wilbur pulled everyone back. They had to hold their ground. Placing half slabs on the windows, the men began returning fire. It didn't take long for them to realize that their shots weren't doing much. They needed another plan. Tommy suggested purling on top of the tower and knocking them all off. <laughs> But Tubble reminded him that Dream had his end crystals from when they killed him earlier. Fundy, however, had a better idea. Using an invisibility potion, he would sneak up the tower, knocking all of them off and escaping Ooh, unseen. I like that this idea. This would be their next plan of action. But as everyone walked outside to draw fire away from Fundy, they realized the arrows had stopped being fired, and Dream's army was falling back to Pong's tower. In an attempt to effectively counter their enemy's new position, the Lamanberg army traveled to the nearby Punza's tower. This tower stood at nearly the same height as Ponk's tower and would allow for the fire to continue. But Dream's army didn't climb the tower. This meant that when Tommy and Tubbo reached the top and began firing down, the Dream SMP army could not shoot high enough to hit them. 
they were completely safe. Because Was this, of this before or after well the fire from increase the rest to of the Lamberg army down below, Dream ordered his men to retreat once again. Because that is hard, this isn't it? Was huge. Somehow, completely outgeared, Lamberg was driving Dream's army out of their own land. And with this victory, Eric convinced the rest of the group to join him in Lamberg, for he had been grinding for a secret weapon. Something that would turn the tides of the war and secure victory. A surprise attack. But something was off. As the group moved closer and closer button. to the final control room, they only became more and more confused. Until they were all there. Gathered around a single wooden button. No. Tommy absolutely could not. not handle the suspense and pressed the button. The room fell silent. Then, the unthinkable happened. There's nothing in the chest. Eric! No! Get out! Get out! Down with the revolution, boys. It was never meant to be. What did the button do? Just like that. They all had nothing. All of their armor and weapons had been stolen or burned, and they all retreated to the van. The place where it all began to take inventory and come up with another plan before long it became even clearer that they had absolutely nothing this meant they would have to resort back to the core beliefs of Lamberg, winning through words wilbur alone attempted to negotiate with dream but it was no use and yet another ultimatum was set if Lamberg did not fly white flags signifying their surrender of the war, Dream would blow up it all. Believing this was a bluff, Wilbur followed Dream back to Lamberg. Why where would him it be a bluff? His men gathered at the wall for their final statement. Then, they all remembered the start of the war, the trap, the explosion. They had to stop. It was too late. All they could do was watch. Gary, get back, get back. Don't let, don't let this hurt you guys. Don't let this be hurt you. Oh. Oh, oh, no, the hot dog van. The land. I called it. I knew it would get blown up. The van. It was all gone. The dream of independence. A chance at freedom. Gone with the swift shot of an arrow. And with that, Wilbur along with his right-hand man, went to negotiate the terms of surrender. And as they met with Dream, Tommy began to run his mouth, and Wilbur's attempts at calming him were no use. Tommy went on, oh my God, insulting he's going Dream off. and even challenging him to a 1v1 bow duel. But then, something happened that was expected by absolutely no one. Dream was interested in the duel. And so, a civilized discussion began, and within minutes, a final duel was Only in on place. one heart, as usual. The rules were simple. Both Tommy and Dream would line up on half a heart. After taking ten paces each, the two would turn around and fire bow shots at each other. The first person to land a shot would win the duel. The stakes were the highest they'd ever been. If Tommy won, Lamberg would be given its independence. But if Dream won, not only would Lamberg lose its independence for good, but Tommy would have to give Dream Mellowhide, one of the two discs he won back from Dream in the first war. With everything on the line, the sun fell low in the sky, and it was a showdown. The creator of the server and most powerful man there versus Tommy, the scrappy 16-year-old with a dream of freedom. They took their positions. Wilbur stood in the center and would be counting off their 10 paces. The fate of Lamberg was now in the hands of Tommy. All his friends could do was watch and pray. The count began. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. The world 
stood still. And then... Ten paces, fire! Oh, getting in the water's Ooh. clever. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of predictable, though, in terms of, like, yeah, Tommy wasn't going to win Tommy that. Tommy had lost. Lamanbert had lost for the second time. And Tommy owed Dream the very disc he spent days fighting to get back. With this, it once again seemed that all hope was lost for Lamanbert. But in one final twist, Tommy had an idea. One that would fly in the face of everything he was known for. He requested for Dream to join a private call, and he did. This is what happened. Dream, I know what you want from me. I'll give you both of the discs if you let us have our independence. Both of them. Ooh. Wait. That is a very, very interesting deal. That is very selfless of you. Those are your discs. For the... For the Manberg, you know? For Wilbur, for Tubbo. Okay, I will... How about this? I'll grant you technical independence for both this. We will we will not go into your your grounds unless we're allowed, and we will. Not you you respect you. us, yeah yeah. Just independence, yeah, man. Just independence. Tommy, what does despite for his what's the difference between technical independence and independence? Thinking only of himself and his own wants and needs, laid down his most prized possessions for the greater good of their nation. This story had a happy ending, and Lamanberg against all odds, was free at last. In the light of their victory, Wilbur gathered the men to write the decree of independence. It read, As we gaze upon the swaths of redwood trees, the great hills to our south, and the walls that have protected us for years, I, as the now president of Lamanberg, hereby state, Yo! <laughs> Life, liberty, and the pursuit of freedom. As the sun set on their new nation, Tommy and Tubbo returned to the bench outside Tommy's house. There, they played a different disc to celebrate their independence. With the Lamanberg War ending, the server once again entered a time of peace. Over the next month, many small skirmishes happened, new developments occurred, and new players joined. But the next true development in their story would arise in early September. With Wilbur being the self-elected president of Lamanberg, many of the new players upon hearing this titled him a dictator. <laughs> what a skin. What resulted from these accusations sparked a new era in the storyline. A different kind of war. Big star? was the What's first doing annual Lamanberg election. Damn. Okay. Wow. That was that was intense. I knew I knew that hot dog man was was doomed <laughs> the moment I saw it. Oh, such a shame. So like, was that was is that their declaration of independence? Then is that did they leave it as that or did they rewrite it? Is it just just as as it is? Um. Wow. That was good. I really liked that. Again, these are so well made. Like they're so well done, the the sort of the music behind it and the way that he's delivering his sort of the story to it is so well done. Um I don't really have much else to, to sort of say on it. I think every comment I've kind of had I've I've done in the middle of it. I can't believe Tommy sacrificed and, and like gave up his discs that he, he fought for in the in in part one of this. Um that's quite fitting really, isn't it? It's like the thing that started the war in part one started the first war in part one ended the second war in part two um yeah i think i'm gonna end it there let me know is, is there still any interest in this in me going through these let me know if you want me to react to the rest of this i don't know how many um parts there are to this story i know um in the past there was some interest but we'll see um let me know if there is and if so i'll definitely check them out i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next video goodbye